always will be the greatest spectacle in racing. This is the Indianapolis 500. Ericsson and Ferrucci. Marcus Ericsson wins the Indianapolis 500 in the most dramatic way. Marcus Ericsson, the winner of the 106th running of the Indianapolis 500. Welcome to Young Hollywood. You've had one very interesting week. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been it's been crazy. I still sort of struggle to understand that it actually really happened. You know, I'm pinching myself. I'm like, is this real? <laughs> Am I in a dream? But uh, no, it's been incredible. You know, it's the biggest race in the world. and. To win it, uh, it's just something I've been dreaming of for, for all my life almost. And, and you know, to achieve that is just, uh, yeah, extremely special. Take me back to the very beginning for those that may not know you. You're from Sweden, you're 31. You've been here about a minute, it seems. So break down your beginnings before you got to the US. So I started with, uh, with go-karts uh, at a young age. I was eight years old, I think, and uh, uh, in, in back in Sweden. and um, did that and, and sort of got picked up when I was 15 uh, to a program, like a talent scouting program, let's say. And uh, and they helped me take the step up to cars. And I was running through like different categories in, in Europe, racing cars there and got all the way to Formula One and, and was in Formula One for five years, which was uh, amazing. I love that. But it was tough thing with Formula One is that it's a lot about being in the best cars. And then it's quite big differences between big teams and smaller teams. So it was quite tough. I didn't really get the results. I, I felt like I should have had. So when that stint ended, I I, I headed to, to America, to IndyCar. And I've been here now four years and been sort of making steady progress every year and had a bit of a break to last year, winning two races and finishing sixth in the championship. And then sort of been going even better this year. And obviously winning the Indy 500 was the big sort of icing on the cake uh, so far. So many American drivers want to get to Formula One and you came from there and you reached your success here. So, <laughs> I mean, do you want to just tell them, no, stay right here. You're good. It's good here. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I, I think Formula One is, is amazing. You know, it's a world's, on the world stage, it's extremely big, you know, and it's, it's all over the world. So, uh, I'm happy I did it. You know, it was a, an amazing experience and it was a dream of mine to, to drive in Formula One. So I think, you know, especially if you get a chance to drive for one of the bigger teams, it's, it's, it's incredible. I think the problem I had was that I was running in smaller teams towards the back of the grid most of my time. And that was very frustrating because, you know, like in anything, if you feel like you're developing, you feel like you're becoming better, but you can't show that because of the material you have available that becomes a frustration so i think that was the problem for me and that was why i wanted to have this fresh start and come to america and i feel like in the car where i am now it's more a level playing field it's more like everyone on the grid has the chance to to win and it's more up to the driver and your team to sort of try and optimize the races so for, for me like i said, I, I don't like to say like oh, f1 or in the car which one's the best i think both are great in their own ways and then you know, F1 was good, but I love being an IndyCar at the moment. Well, I mean, you wouldn't have gotten to where you are now if you didn't have F1. So, I mean, you can look exactly. at it that way, right? Yeah. Exactly. That's that's so right. And so you talked about your team. Let's talk about your teammates who actually obviously wanted to win themselves. But here you are having Scott Dixon and Jimmy Johnson in their own ways help you succeed and win. <laughs> I yeah, mean, it, it, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it is truly a team effort you know it's it's a it is you know the driver that sort of crosses the finish line but it's it's all about the team you know you have your pit wall with the engineers and strategists you have your pit crew and mechanics that are doing the pit stops and then you have your teammates that you work with all all weekend and you know, all month of may like it is for the 500 to help set up your car and even the race work together so it, it truly is a team team sport in that sense and uh but in the end of the day, of course, everyone wants to win. So, so I'm very proud and happy about that. But uh, I have great teammates and I'm sure they're going to make life hard for me going forward and try, you know, try and beat me. But that's how it should be. So did they talk to you after the race and say, oh, man, or obviously it's all congratulatory and special. 
yeah, no, I mean, all, all my teammates came up and then was congratulating me on, on the win. You know, they, they know how big this win is. And like we said, you know, it's the biggest race in the world. So, so it's, uh, they were very happy for me. But, but of course, also, in a way, I'm sure a bit disappointed that they, they didn't win. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's how it is. You know, our sport is so competitive and, and it's, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, I mean, so you won and obviously life changed in that moment. So you take your victory lap, you you kiss the bricks, like break down what happened. And then you're like taken to New York, my hometown, yay, the best city. And and you're just thrown into it. It's life changing. Yeah, it, it is truly life changing. You know, this this race is so big that it's everyone says, you know, it's a life changing event if you win it. And uh, for me, really, it's, it's been just crazy. You know, from Sunday afternoon when I took the checkered flag, it's been pretty much a full minute by minute schedule since then. You know, now we're here in what Thursday afternoon, and it's been just full on. I haven't really had time to sit back and just sort of take a breath and, and try and think what has actually happened. It's just been full on. We had a lot of media in Indianapolis on Sunday evening, and then you know, full day in, in Indianapolis on Monday with the media and then a victory celebration banquet in, in the evening. And then we jumped on a jet to go to New York, got there in like 3 a.m. Uh, Tuesday morning and 7 a.m. I was up going to the NASDAQ and ringing the opening bell there, which was so cool. I love that. It was such a cool experience. Went to the Empire State Building, to the secret top floor, which was so cool. Wait, the secret and then, top floor? Yeah, they say that's you know, like they don't bring people there, and I'd like not tell anyone, and I'm telling everyone about it, so I might be in trouble. <laughs> but hey, it was so cool. I really love that. The view was just incredible, especially it was a beautiful day as well. Uh, and then finished off the day with going to the Yankees game and throwing the first pitch. So it's like, hey, that's a pretty good day, huh? It's a pretty good day. Did you expect it to be what it has been? And then you you left out getting your portrait taken for the big trophy it yeah. doesn't get better than that right <laughs> no that that is very true you know that is something that's you know that trophy and this race and the history of it and all the winners over the years to, to be in that club and have your face like you said they, they make the face of every winner on the actual trophy and that is just it's so cool and you know it's the coolest and biggest trophy i've ever seen you know so to be to be on that, it's, 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 you know, it's going to be there forever. And you're always in, in the history after that win. So that's, um, yeah, I, I'm very, very proud of that. We took the photos for that on 8 a.m. on Monday morning after I had two hours of sleep that night. So I'm, I'm not sure I looked my best. Let's put it that way. So let's see. Yeah. I am hope there will be some more photo shoots for that uh, trophy thing. I don't know. Let's no, see. I guess maybe that's when they take the picture for everybody. So everybody maybe. looks kind of like sleeping yeah. vibes. <laughs> Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> What's the first thing that you do after a win? Some people eat tacos, some people eat barbecue. What, what do you got? No, so it was really cool, actually, because I had, you know, coming from Sweden, I live here in the States now and I'm far away from my family and friends and so on. But I was so lucky to have my family, my mom and dad and one of my brothers. They were here. My girlfriend was here. My my manager and my biggest uh, support like sponsor has been there all my career they were all there so i got the chance you know to share that moment with all of them and we actually went out and had dinner in, in indianapolis uh, late dinner on sunday night and it was just so amazing to share that with them and you sit there and, and you know have a drink and just talk and, and enjoy the moment now your dad if i'm correct was a painter like not even in this field so a he's proud b how are your painting skills my painting skills are terrible but yeah he he's uh he's a house painter he has his own company and has had that since i think he started actually the year i was born so since wow. 1990 so it's, it's been a while and my other brother he's he's actually working in that company with my dad which is really cool but yeah my dad keeps telling me it's good you good at driving race cars because you were a terrible little painter when you were young. <laughs> so how did you even convince your parents? They weren't even in the field. How did you convince them at a young age to say, this is what I need to do? Yeah, it was funny. It was, it was all by, by accident almost. You know, I was, uh, there was a rental karting, you know, rental go-kart place close to where I lived in Sweden. And I kept bugging my dad, like, I want to go there and drive. I want to go there and drive. And my dad you know, didn't know better. So he was like, yeah, okay, well, let's go there. <laughs> And we went there, I remember for one summer when I was like eight years old 
And I kept driving and driving. And the guy who owned the place, his name was Frederick, or is Frederick Ekblom. And he is like a touring car driver in Sweden. So he saw, like, after a couple of times we've been in, like, he saw me drive and he told my dad, like, are you guys, like, is he racing go-karts or what's going on? And my dad's like, no, it's like the second time he drives. And he was just shocked, <laughs> like, the natural talent that I had. Yeah. So we kept going there. And then Frederick helped my dad to, um, to buy a go-kart and, you know, help him get set up and, and start this whole crazy journey. <laughs> and on this crazy journey, you got a pretty impressive phone call uh this week do you want to like tell people who you got a phone call i mean i could like break it to our viewers but i mean i didn't get the phone call it's pretty cool <laughs> yeah no it was it was funny because it was um let's it, just say it's it, the king of sweden it it, it is the you. king of sweden <laughs> the king of sweden but the, yeah. fun, the funny thing is he's actually calling my manager because i didn't have my phone on me obviously after finishing the race and my <laughs> manager don't have like he doesn't have the king of sweden's number so he sees his number so he keeps like clicking and he's like declining this number all, all the time and then the next morning on monday morning this number calls again and it's like okay i better pick up because this guy's been calling me all day yesterday he picks up and it's the king of sweden <laughs> so, so that was yeah pretty crazy <laughs> wait but that's not the first time you guys spoke right you guys are kind of pals yeah, he's, he's actually been a guest of mine in Monaco when I did Formula One there uh, a couple of years back. So, so I know him a little bit and he's a huge racing fan. But nevertheless, you know, it's, it's so cool to to hear it from him and get the congratulations from him. You know, that means means so much for me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, of course, like I said, you are from Sweden. And so I wanted to play a little game with you if you're up for it. It's called This or That uh, Sweetest Edition. Is that is that good for you? Let's go. Okay, yeah, let's go. So here we go. Swedish meatballs or pickled herring? Swedish meatballs. Easy. Okay. Why? Do you have a good family recipe or? Uh, uh, yeah, but I think, you know, it's just classic. You know, Swedish meatballs is, is um, with that said, the pickled herring is, is also really good, especially in the summer. So like I was very quick on Swedish meatballs. Now I'm having some second thoughts, but yeah, I, I stick with the meatballs. Okay, cool. This one should be easy uh, now. Absolute vodka or milk? <laughs> milk, of course. You know, I mean, milk is a winner's drink, right? So always. But it, I mean, it's, absolute vodka is good too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's Swedish, so it's uh, of course. But this is Swedish edition, this or that. Yeah, so yeah, everything I on this you, list is you. from your home country. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. IKEA or H&M? That's a hard one. I mean, I'm a big IKEA fan, and I have an IKEA close to me in Indianapolis. So I go there quite often. You know. Wait, breaking um, news. Wait, stop. Breaking news. Marcus Erickson is an IKEA fan, like straight up. Uh, for sure. I mean, I'm Swedish. I gotta love IKEA. You know, I I grow up at IKEA, <laughs> pretty much. But I so I would pick IKEA. H and M is also great, but uh, I I'll pick IKEA. Wow. So do you have like the whole living room set, bedroom? Like, is that your furniture in your home? I, I have quite a few stuff from Ikea in my in my apartment, actually. I think I just got you a sponsorship deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring it on. Okay. ABBA or Avicii? Avicii. Yeah. I mean, I that. ABBA is, the, ABBA is the, like the biggest from, from, from Sweden, but I just think for... For me, you know, my generation, Avicii, is, he was so big. And, and, you know, I have also, like, I've done some stuff with his dad, with his foundation, Tim Bergling Foundation. So I actually did this winter. I did a thing. I, I did a special burger for, like, a burger chain in Sweden. And all the, like, $1 of each burger we sold that month um, went to the Tim Bergling Foundation. And we, we got in more than... I think it was like fifteen thousand uh, dollars that we went to to that. So that was that was super cool. Very nice, very nice. Volvo or Saab? Oof, uh, Volvo, Volvo. Or Honda, if we're you know playing. But Honda, I mean, this yeah, is the Swedish edition, it, so I have to stick Swedish. with Volvo or Saab. My, my 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 first car was a Volvo Seven Forty from nineteen ninety, the same year as me. So there you go. Wait uh it was still in the family or you guys bought it just late no i bought it myself for like 800 bucks or something 
how did you get the money uh, i don't know i saved up for it and i was i had just turned 18 and yeah in sweden you have to be 18 to get a license so i took my license the same day as i turned 18 and i bought the car for 800 bucks for some like local guy in this in my hometown it's quite funny Amazing. do you guys still have it or no it's somewhere no, so I sold it to a friend of mine and he crashed it around like a tree or something. Luckily, he was fine, but the car, not so much. Well, God, he's fine, but that car would have been worth something now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, pop music only, because pop music originated in your home country, or Spotify on shuffle, because Spotify originated in Sweden. Spotify on shuffle, always. You know, that's... Uh... My one of my favorite apps on, on you know in my life really. <laughs> Wait, no kidding. Well, because it's from Sweden or just because? Nah, I think I mean it's good. It's from Sweden, but I just think it's good. I mean, I love music, so it's it's just good, convenient. What are you listening to these days? Now that we're talking about music. Oh, uh, I'm like you know listening to all kinds of music. That's the thing. Like I, I'm, but like pop music i would say but i could also be like it's a bit of what mood i'm in so sometimes i'm like i love i'm like listening to a lot of rap and then next week i love like classic rock from like the 80s and, and i don't know i'm used to be weird like that i just switch like swing from all different directions from week to week nice nice okay outside to see the northern lights or stay inside in an ice hotel Northern Lights, but we do have an ice hotel, up, uh, ice hotel up north there, which is pretty. I've never been, so it's definitely on my list to to go there. And cash in everything you want to do now, because you'll just get okay, <laughs> yeah, exactly. invites. You'll just get all the invites. You're going to the ice hotel next week. Well, no, you got to race, but maybe after. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is the big one, and I think you know. Maybe it's coming, maybe not. I have to ask. You ready? Bring it on. Swedish fish, or Husky chocolate. <laughs> Husky chocolate. <laughs> Who doesn't love chocolate milk, right? Well, I mean, now that we're talking about it, is this just a gimmick or what, what's what's with Swedish fish? Do you guys really have these or it's a just a gimmick, really? Before I went to America, I'd never seen it in my life. Wait. No one in no one in Sweden knows what Swedish fish is. So and we're so breaking funny. news. So you're saying, and I did, trust me, I did my research on this before the interview. You guys have candy that looks like this, but I think yeah. it's just it's just candy. So so okay. I have no idea how this like why it's called Swedish fish. Like it's red. Like there's nothing to do with Sweden. I, I'm not, I mean the the package is blue and yellow. I can sort of see, but. Like it's red fishes, like candy. Uh, it's, it's, it's a bit of a mystery, I gotta say. It's pretty tasty though. Like it's just pretty good candy. I'll take that. Okay, so we just figured out at the end of this uh, lovely interview that Swedish fish have nothing to do with Sweden. And we don't know how it got its name. Yeah, pretty much. That's the conclusion, yeah. We got a mystery on our hands. I, I, you know what? Now I'm going to try and figure this out because I couldn't figure it out before. This is a mystery. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, what's your go-to candy then? I'm have a weak spot for chocolate. Uh, I gotta say that. So yeah, I I like I don't know. I go to IKEA and buy like Swedish chocolate. There, it's pretty good. You should try that. Uh, that's on my Swedish list. Chocolate. And then when you go to IKEA, you can have the Swedish meatballs. Exactly. There, there you go. Swedish meatballs, Swedish candy. Buy some. You know, it's just good to hang around there you know good vibe uh, you have all the swedish names and all the stuff you know that no one can pronounce here in the states which is quite funny but no one it's good i know right so what would you say to end this interview in in swedish i would say tack så mycket det här har varit väldigt roligt uh, det hörs. and now in english i hope it was all pg uh, it was it was all good. I was I was behaving. I promise. <laughs> no, I was just uh, thank you for the interview. It's been a lot of fun. See you later. <laughs> Absolutely, and good luck the rest of the season. And congratulations again. Thank you so much. Have a good one. The biggest race in the world, and uh, something we all work so much towards, and we all dream of winning this race. It was a true team effort, and I'm very very proud to be the champion.